All right, hey everyone, welcome back to Fundamentals of Animation using Procreate Dreams. Um, on our next assignment here, we're going to be going, oops, sorry. We're gonna be going into um, a head turn. So we'll keep it pretty basic. We're gonna keep our 4K widescreen here, just hit draw. And, um, you know, like before, I just like to keep these things organized. So I'm just going to rename this head turn. <clears throat> All right, so back into our overall view, but I'm going to switch to drawing view and drop this down so I can get to my flipbook. And um, before we did guides for the bouncing ball and the pendulum swing, here I'm not necessarily going to do a guide. Uh, we're going to just be using the pose to pose keyframe type of process. Uh, so let me walk you through how that looks. We're going to be using a character called Norman. We use that here at Rocky Mountain College where I'm a professor. And um, I know that even schools like SCAD also use the same character and same technique. So everything that we're learning um, is very applicable to uh, like what you might learn in a college program. Okay, so Norman, um, I believe was created by Eric Goldberg. I'm not exactly sure, but he's, a, he's kind of a common character across some of the animation books. But essentially the character of Norman is just a sphere head Gonna break down the character here, and he's got two eyes, and I've seen different ways. My students draw Norman all kinds of ways, but um, I'm gonna keep it pretty simple. It's more about the technique than the style. So he has these two eyes, and then he's got kind of a big nose coming out like this. There we go, and then I'll just kind of clean this up a little bit so you can see the nose a little bit better. And if you really want to, you can kind of give him a mouth here as well. So just a really basic um, head for Norman. And I'm just gonna suggest a body down here. Okay, so we've got our first Kipos. I'm gonna throw some eyebrows on him. There we go. All right, and now we'll go on to our next um, key pose, which will be Norman all the way turned over. So uh, here's my previous drawing based on the onion skin, you can see. And my next drawing, I'm just going to be doing a pretty simple shift across. I'm going to keep the head relatively within the same um, spacing and bring Norman over here. All right, and then I'm going to use my lines and um, try and keep the same volumes as much as you can. The construction of the character is really important, and I use these guidelines just to kind of keep me tried and true of where things land. Um, so let's see here. Norman might be kind of leaning forward this way. So let me just take a look without my onion skin of how this is kind of turning out here. Okay, that's pretty good. Like I said, I'm just trying to keep these pretty basic. I'm not gonna over exacerbate myself with the overall drawing of things. Um, and then now I'm gonna change his mouth expression maybe to just like a open mouth, sort of like this. See that? Pretty happy with how the volumes are turning out. Um, so I'll just keep moving forward here. I've got him camera left because he's going to be looking right. So compositionally, you know, maybe there could be an object over here uh, that would cause Norman to react. So I've got my two key drawings. <clears throat> could probably round this out a little bit more down here. Okay. Now the next thing, uh, like we learned in our previous lesson, we need a breakdown pose. So we've got keyframe, keyframe. Now we need a breakdown. And so the breakdown again is how do you get from A to B? So we're going from this pose here to this pose here. And we need a drawing in the middle. So um, what I usually suggest is kind of 
ducking the head down a little bit and blinking the eyes. And here you can squash a little bit if you want to. All right, so Norman's head's gonna be a little bit more aligned. Um, let's see, one thing you can kind of do is trail the nose a little bit. So if Norman's head is coming across, maybe his shoulders are kind of up a little bit in the body as his nose is kind of dipping. So you want to have a, a nice animation arc. So we don't go left to right like this with the nose. What you really want to do is kind of bring this down and create an animation arc, which is a principle of animation. And the arcs just create life and balance, and it'll give you a sense that the head has weight to it. Because if it just goes from left to right along this linear path, A, it's going to be a little bit boring. B, um, it's going to look like Norman's not really alive. And the whole point of doing this sort of animation is to create that illusion of life. So we're going to dip down the nose here. Give myself a little guide. And um, the other thing I want to do is kind of blink Norman's eyes down. Like so. Um, might do like a little bit of shading in the eyes just to kind of signify a blink. Bring the eyebrows down a little bit, like this. I'm gonna turn off my onion skin so I can see this a little bit better. All right, so you've got Norman left, head bumps down, boop. So there you have it, keyframe, breakdown, keyframe. And Norman's got a little reaction going on. See that? Okay, so now just like before with the pendulum swing, this is kind of like a pendulum swing ball bounce. It has a little combination of the head goes boink and then comes back up. And it's also swinging across like an animation or a uh, pendulum swing with a nice arc to it. So some of those previous lessons go right into this. Okay, <clears throat> now we go into our onion skin. I'm going to go ahead and edit this, drop this down to one frame and let's see here so one backwards one forwards there we go and um, the way we're going to create a nice animation here is by easing out of this pose going into our next one because when we get into this breakdown that's where we want the fastest part of the animation to happen so the more drawings that we have leading to the keyframe, it'll slow out of here, go quickly through this part, and then land there. All right, here we go. So this is just a standard in between, which means we want to get these, the main circle of the head at this middle point between the two states of motion here like this. And um, the other thing that we want to do is kind of track this nose here. So this nose is kind of coming down this way. And I use these little guidelines to help me out here. So the nose can be kind of coming across like this. Keep that size as proportionate as I can. Let's see here, track this little guideline down the middle, which will help me place my eyes. Okay, and then the last thing I might want to do, um, just fix this nose a little bit. It'll be easier. I can do a little bit of cleanup once I turn off uh, my Indian skin and can see this a little bit better. But, um, all right, so let me just bring this body in a little bit. Still see the neck a tiny bit. Okay, and then I also want to um, start to blink the eyes here.
and maybe start to lower these brows, the eyebrows down some. Whenever you're undoing, you can just tap with two fingers like this to undo, three to redo, um, just in case you need to know that. Okay, so let me turn off the onion skin, and then now I can a little bit see this a little bit better. Oops, didn't mean for that to happen. Okay, so let me just clean this circle up a little bit. I don't want to drag too much on about the actual drawing because I really want to tackle technique more than anything. But I do want my drawing to still look appealing. Okay, and then don't forget he has a mouth. So just kind of suggest that here. And let me just detail the eyebrows a little bit more. Okay. So there you can see Norman starting to blink his eye. And that head is kind of collapsing on the shoulder there. The shoulders are coming up a little bit. Just define that neck a little more. Okay. Now we just continue to, in between, towards the keyframe, <clears throat> our key pose here. Like that, so I'm just driving this line right down the middle, keeping it pretty loose. If you wanna go back and clean up these drawings, you can. Um, but, you know, I wanna keep this in mind as this, this is more just for learning. So don't put too much pressure on yourself to make these look perfect right now. You can do these assignments a million times over and learn something new like every time that you're doing it. So um, you can always go back to these basics and uh, spend lots of time just practicing different techniques and different ways to do things. <clears throat> okay, so I'm trying to line up these eyes the easiest way to do this is to just get this construction line going here and really driving it down the middle. And then from there, you really kind of know um, where to land these eyes. Like this. So um, as you, and one other thing I just want to touch on is as you'll see, I'm not really <clears throat> pushing the software in any certain direction. This animation is, should be software ambiguous, where this can, you can do this on paper if you wanted to just follow along and learn animation on paper. All of the same uh, principles are applying. Let me just get that mouth location a little bit tighter here. There. And his eyebrows. So track your features. It's got his eyebrow going on here. I'm probably gonna favor the up eyebrow like that, just so he kind of maintains his happy state. All right, there you go. So, whoops. I guess I should use my finger. So here's kind of how it's looking. We're easing out of this pose, and then going into that one. So I'm going to continue to in between towards my first keyframe, and this will probably be my last key or my last in between here. Um, I think it'll be enough of a slow out into that next pose. All right, and the closer the drawings get, the easier it is to just sort of put these things together. Like I, I don't think I necessarily need that guideline running down the middle here. I'm just gonna free hand this in between so I can quickly get through this part. Okay. 
Now, if you're like animating for a feature film, of course you want everything to be super tidy, super clean. Um, but you know, there's varying stages of revision, so you don't necessarily need all of that to happen on your first drawings, but you do want to put as much emphasis in the construction, everything of the character. So as you're doing these drawings and in-betweens and everything, uh, you're not being careless with your art. But in these first passes, it's not a big deal uh, if it looks a little bit rough. So here you can see my character is easing into that pose, blink, and then coming out. Okay, I'm not worried about timing right now. I'm just following along and getting it to a place that I'm enjoying um, how it's feeling. Last thing I want to do, I see that I didn't get my mouth in there, so I'm just gonna put that mouth right there. Okay, turn off my Indian skin. And now we're going to go from our breakdown to our next key pose. And we're gonna do, let's see, how many drawings did we have here? One in between, two, three. So we had, looks like one, two, three in-betweens there. So we'll do three on this side and then hold from the beginning and an end so that we can like look at this a little bit, character turns the head, and then we'll hold uh, at this last expression. Um, all right, so just following along, doing the same thing. And we are not over-exaggerating this expression too much. You can really, I mean, I love 2D animation because you can essentially do whatever you want um, as long as you can draw it and sort of perceive that action. So what I'm saying is I'm, I'm keeping it a little bit basic here just to kind of give you that the idea of how to execute these things. And so here I'm going to, because our poses are a little bit further apart, I'm gonna try and, whoops, uh, direct this guideline here a little bit better. And the nose, I want to, let's see here we have this eye, this eye, so I want it to kind of fall in the middle. <clears throat> So you can kind of in between locations and features uh, to be able to find um, where things go. So if you saw what I just did with the eye, I just looked at this one, this one, so the, the pose before and after to find out, you know, kind of where are those eyes landing and then I found um, where I wanted my eye to land. And here I want the blink to kind of know when to be coming out of this blink. Now we know essentially where to place our nose. Something like this. I think our brows can still be sort of lowered here on Norman. And let's see, the mouth can be kind of suggested here a little bit. Okay, let me turn off my onion skin and just kind of flip through, see how this is looking. Cool. Okay, going to just keep pushing forward. Turn my onion skin on. Create a new frame in, in there. Now we'll do this in between. And then we'll have one more in between to go. And then you'll have your first little head turn. This is a really fun assignment that I like to do um, at our college. It's really a, a great way to transition from the ball bounce and pendulum swing into just a very light character animation exercise. And um, yeah, I mean, let's be honest, we all wanna practice animating characters and bringing life um, to our scene. So it's a really fun assignment to kind of execute that and also um, stay on track with just like learning some of the fundamentals and principles as we go forward. I right, get my little divider line here. I think this nose is feeling a little unbalanced, but we'll just keep going. Okay, I want my eyes to kind of come up here. Okay, 
these eyes now I want to kind of get this more of an in-between state actually I might um, get like this little French curve going on here as they're coming up and then the mouth it's going to start opening, so I'm going to just begin to open it here, like this. Okay, so let me turn off my onion skin. So you can see how I'm coming out of there. Okay, and then we just have one last in between to go. A little rather quickly through this one. Like I said, as things get uh, closer together, it's a little bit easier to hit these in-betweens um, fast, especially if you're working rough like this. And you know, we're, for learning exercises, it's uh, easier to just keep these things loose. Okay. this line down here like this place these eyes not really loving how I did that eye A little too loose. Let me just define these eyes a little bit clearer here. There, that feels better. Okay. Now I'm just, you can see where my eye was here, where it's going here. I'm just placing these in the middle. Then this mouth shape is kind of growing here, so I want to get a little bit of an in-between moment there. Start to perk these eyebrows up, find a nice in-between state like that. Okay, so I think this um, this should feel pretty good. Kept it loose, we knocked it out pretty quickly. Now. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about the drawings beyond this point. Let's just go ahead and hit our timeline here and take a look. So we want everything on twos. We're animating at 24 frames per second. So each drawing you want to be two frames long. So again, we drag, we, we select the outside of the frame where we're going to drag to the right. Then you need to place your finger on the anywhere else on the screen so that you can go ahead and nudge or push the um, following frames. So I'm just adding one frame length to all of these. Now the first drawing, I want to have a hold. I want Norman to kind of just sit here for a second. So I'm probably going to take this and drag it to like eight frames. And then this one, same. Just give it a little bit of space there so Norman can go from a hold, animate through, and then hold again. So let's give it a watch. Looks pretty good to me. So you see the little bounce, boom. And it's, it, it has the same kind of momentum where at that breakdown pose, we're moving our fastest. Now, if you want to talk about um, timing charts, now we can kind of add some of that here. Uh, this would be our first key pose. And our breakdown is landing on Looks like frame, we're going to 15 here. So I want to hold so one to eight is just kind of a hold. And then we're going down to 15. 
Um, let's see here. So no, like really typically let's just fix this real quick. I want it to actually go to nine. You want to animate when you're animating, you kind of want to keep these things on two frames. So you, you don't really want to have an even number. So let me just erase that and go to nine. Okay. And then we go to, from nine to 15. which is our breakdown, which uh, we're actually not, we're gonna go, let me just adjust this timing chart here. So we're actually going from nine to 23. Like this, with our breakdown happening at 15. So here in the middle, we have 15. You can kind of bracket that off. And we have three in-betweens happening. So we're gonna mark that. We're gonna do a half here. That's gonna be 13, 11. Oh, you know what it actually looks like? Nine, here, let me take this to seven. Okay, so nine is actually an in-between here. So nine is gonna go there, and our last frame is gonna go to seven like that. There, that's better. Then we're gonna hit 17, 19, 21. So we have a hold here, and then when we hit frame nine, that's when we're going into our in-between, so we've got Nine. I'm gonna turn off my onion skin. Nine, 11, 13, 15 is our breakdown. 17, 19, 21. 23. Okay, so there you go. Circle it because it's a keyframe. And we're just going to leave it like that. Um, so, I mean, like, the timing chart, I don't want to get too much into it right now because I just want to focus on how to animate using Procreate Dreams and building competency there first before we start talking too much about timing. <clears throat> But essentially, um, this is how you would do a real basic head turn. You've got that little breakdown where our character is blinking and moving upon an arc there, having a little bit of an expression change. Um, so to me, that's looking pretty good. All right, so uh, hopefully you enjoyed this lesson. I think that um, what we covered a little bit more in the in-betweening process, our, keys, our key posing, uh, developing that breakdown and working through our animation arcs and just a little bit about a, a timing chart as well. Um, so hopefully that all makes sense. Please uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments and hope you enjoy this lesson.